Hey guys, hey, we're, we're uh, dealing with our technical difficulties for the first time we're hosting like this format. Um, uh, so, I just want to do a quick introduction to the address. Kenny, uh, uh, you're uh, echoing. Huh? You're echoing. <laughs> Better? <laughs> yes, no? It's because you're hosting and co hosting. You got two. You got two with your mic open. I don't know where it's echoing from. Everyone needs to mute. Everyone needs to mute. mute off on entry. Uh, is it echoing right now? You're good now. Okay. Cool. You want me to be a co-host too? I'm gonna make you come to and help, uh, Lindy Win. Yeah, you're back to echoing. <laughs> Sorry. I think when you step back, you echo. Yes. Okay, it's probably okay, just echo this building. All right. All right. No, you got two open, Kenny. You got. All right, I can't hear myself. Mics. You got you got two mics open. Is it better? Nope. There's no other thing. Thing music. All right. Don't worry. We just deal with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, as I was saying, say, maybe something, something around here. But um, so I've been with ESP for almost two years. I brought on about I think ninety five people directly by myself. Uh, we're top ten at ESP with fifty eight FLQA. <clears throat> they want to talk to you guys about best agent uh, agent attraction strategies. I have my co chair Raquel that's going to do control with herself too. Amazing. Uh, Kenny, do you just want me to roll or are you still going to speak? Uh, are... Okay. It sounds like um, he's going to get that all squared away. I'm excited to be here. Excited to. I'm still here. I hear an echo from Kenny. Okay. Uh, so you know what? This is an iPad. This is what happens when you have a lot of tech. <laughs> I would always, I, hey, Christina, I would almost say like, it's time for a new office, but like you always have new offices, like every other month, it seems like. <sighs> All right, Kenny, you good? I was saying we're, uh, so we're gonna do over best agent attraction strategies today. Uh, Raquel's a big, been a big part of helping me do that as she expanded many different cities. Oh, I think we're going over the basics first, right? Can you, can you, maybe I need your help pulling up the slides, Raquel. Okay, so I am just gonna go and roll with my slides. And if you wanna just hop in um, and kind of tell your story, that would be amazing. Cool. Cool, all right. Yeah. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my slides. If you guys can see my screen, can you give me a thumbs up? Yes. Thanks, Miguel. All right. So our class today is fast forward to freedom. And what I'm most excited about this uh, talking today is because if you learn anything today is you guys obviously have an amazing opportunity at EXP. And one of the best skills that you could learn is probably recruiting or agent attraction. All right, so I'd love to know, and I love like when the chat kind of goes off, is where are you guys at in the recruiting process? So I could just get a feel for who's in the room. I, had, I saw some people already in there that I know. Um, a, if you've recruited agents before, whether it's for your team, for other businesses, or if you have recruited for like a support staff, uh, any time, type of like recruiting uh, is, would, be, would be A. And then B, I'm looking to recruit agents to build my rev share. And then C, I'm just not sure about recruiting. It makes me feel uncomfortable. A and B, I love the like in-betweens. Thanks, Cynthia. Kim, thank you. Awesome. Okay, I love it. I always love coming to fast events because you guys are so active in the chat. All right, so guess what? It doesn't matter where you're at in the process. We're going to cover all of it today. And uh, 
what I know is that the uh, recruiters out there, or you guys as EXP, are great, um, have an opportunity, okay? How many of you guys have ever felt like when you introduced yourself as EXP, someone came back and said, like, don't recruit me? Or like, oh, you're that recruiting company, like raise your hand, right? Almost like the army. Yeah, thank you. Like, I love the hand raises, right? Or how many of you guys feel like, you know what? There's too many people that are at the top. I think I'm too late to the game when it comes to the EXP rev share. Any of you guys? Yeah, yeah. And then some of you guys, how many of you guys are like, I don't even know what this thing is. I feel a little bit uncomfortable. I don't exactly know what to say, but I know that I want to build my rev share. If, if you relate to any of that, say yes in the chat. Okay. All right. So a little bit about me is I am Kenny's coach. And one thing that I love, and if you, if you've followed me for a long time is I've been in the industry for about 22 years. This is probably one of my absolute favorite is recruiting because I know that you could use this skill in anywhere um, in your business or any business that you ever build. So I've recruited for my own real estate teams. I've recruited for several of our businesses, whether it's property management, transaction management, any other company that we've ever started, investment companies, we've always recruited for them. And I started off obviously having two teams out in California and then got to Arizona and then became a recruiter for, uh, for a, a real estate company. That's when I actually really learned how much recruiting can totally change a business. We recruited, we were a failing brokerage when I took it over. And three years later, we became the number one brokerage. Talk about how many interviews, agent situations, agents problems, agents gaps. Not only was I an agent myself, but I could actually speak their language. So new market, we became the largest. Um, and we came, became one of the top 10 in our company. And for their expansion uh, from 2015 to 2018, I recruited million dollar producers. So I'll tell you when it comes to recruiting, there is no big, like there's nobody that's too big. It's all in mindset and all in how you deliver when it comes to the value that you provide as as a person, okay? And today I have recruited leadership teams. I get to help a lot of my clients figure out how they wanna grow when it comes to recruiting. And as you know, for a lot of you guys that are on here, Kenny has grown extremely fast. His numbers have, have been climbing and he's definitely not stopping and he's found his zone of genius and we are going to start to continue to build businesses around that. Okay. I know a lot of you guys are real estate agents on this call. So here's the thing. You guys have all learned how to sell um, in one way or another, whether you're a new agent or a mega agent or a top agent, you've learned how to sell houses. You learn how to build. If you could do both, they say you'll be unstoppable. And guess what? Recruiting is about building. It's about building people. It's about building and it helps you build your businesses. So. If there's one thing you take out of, out of today is if you could, if you know how to sell houses, you definitely know, will know how to recruit. Here's what we're going to learn today. Kenny had asked me to just come in really quickly, like share some quick nuggets on things that we've been talking about, things that he's put into play is, you know, we're going to talk about how this opportunity can give you freedom. Kenny's going to talk about that. Kenny's going to talk about his journey at EXP in such a short period of time and where he's at today. Why you want to learn the skills of recruiting. I've kind of said a little bit of about that. And then, you know, what you need to know about recruiting. And then I'm going to give you guys a very simple. How many of you guys like quick, simple processes that you could remember? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to give you a simple process when it comes to agent attraction or it comes to recruiting talent uh, that you guys could walk away with from our class today. And then how this can be part of your business plan. And I know a lot of you guys either have your business plan already for for next year 
or are working on your business plan and how that can actually how this class can actually help with your business plan um, for next year. All right. I love quotes. Change your thoughts about recruiting talent and your world will, will change. If you look at a, a lot of people in our industry that have massive worlds, they've had to do some type of recruiting. And along the way from producer to business owner to entrepreneur, they've had to change their thoughts when it came to recruiting. And I believe that recruiting will always change your world, especially when you could recruit, recruit talent. So Kenny, how big is the opportunity um, at EXP? Where was that? How big is the opportunity at EXP? I know you wanted to share that. With EXP, everyone's on a level playing field. Everyone has the same opportunities um, and revenue share. And it's, it's just a fair, fair thing for everyone. And then depending on who you are, who you're working with, what you say, you can become a better recruiter than someone else. Just because you're a top producer doesn't mean you're a good recruiter. Just because you're brand new doesn't mean you have you don't have an opportunity to bring on big people. You get that? Yes. Yes. We did get that. So we did get of where you're at, new agent, top producer. He says the opportunity is really big. So big that I know people um, in this industry have bought a Tesla with their rev share. They've gone on vacation. They've bought vacation homes, right? And they've like, some of them have even taken their rev share and saved it away for their kids' college, right? The opportunity becomes endless when you know what the opportunity is, right? I know people in this organization that have six figures a month in rev share, right? And that's working for them while they're building their business, while they're selling houses. And some of them are no longer in production because of rev share. So the opportunity is still around. It's still big. And I think it's only going to get bigger for EXP, right? So let's talk about the importance of recruiting. Did you know that recruiting isn't the answer? Because I know that some of you guys have heard that recruiting is the answer to everything. Recruiting is the answer to growth. But here's what I will tell you. It is not the answer to everything. Okay, the answer to everything is connection. I actually want you to replace recruiting with connection. Right, think of recruiting as connecting with people. Because guess what, the best recruiters in this industry are great connectors. The best recruiters are great influencers. And it doesn't necessarily mean like you have a ton of influence or you got tons of followers on, you know, Instagram or TikTok. It doesn't mean that. It means that you've got some influence by even just how you show up in the world. Right? The best recruiters also create the best value because I can tell you that I've gotten a lot of calls and it's so interesting to hear everybody's different perspective when it comes to EXP or it comes to another company recruiting, right? And I'm sure some of you guys who've been in business for a long time, you guys get to hear, you know, people recruit you or you guys get those blanket emails or those templates that say, hey, we've got this, this and this going on at our company. We'd love to talk to you. Who can relate to that's gotten some type of recruiting email text here on this call ever in their career. Okay, and the best recruiters, I will say, listen, a lot of times we go to these events or we go to these things and we want to throw up all the value or all the bright shiny objects that we could provide. And really, I would say, even in my years of like recruiting, the most, the, the fewer times that I actually spoke the least were my best recruiting appointments. Because I listened, I listened to their challenges, I listened to their problems, right? And then I was able to offer them what they needed, not what 
the the menu that we could provide them as a company or as a team right so the best recruiters are amazing listeners can you want to like say something okay okay all right so we're going to what was the last comment? Sorry, I had to mute someone. Uh, I said, no, no, no. I said, I, I didn't. I said if you wanted to say anything. Okay, so we're going to talk about a really quick, simple process for you guys to remember when it comes to recruiting. And you guys might need a pen and paper to like just jot some things down. Um, first is we have seen funnels out there, right? When it comes to recruiting, when it comes to agent attraction, it's about attract. You get hand raises, you, you see a little bit of interest from that agent, and then you connect, right? That's the typical funnel when it comes to attraction. And there could be different ways that you can attract people, whether it's events, Facebook, here's like some of a few, right? Instagram, open houses, training. And for those that are like with fast real estate, like you guys have a lot of this, right? Kenny has built a machine for you guys actually to leverage off of right there's lots of times where i'm seeing things on social media because you guys are having training events there's lots of different events just you know dinners parties that you guys can always um you know leverage right you don't necessarily have to have the training um you don't necessarily have to have to put the training on Right, so there's different ways that you can attract people or attract agents to the company and. i'm going to give you guys five quick steps right and I call it my five c's when it comes to recruiting I know some of you guys are thinking like Raquel what's the script that I use right and I want to say that there are a lot of people that can teach you different scripts. And here's the thing is that those are good to, to an extent until the situation is not doesn't fit the situation and so if i could give you guys a framework that you guys could always utilize i promise you that you guys will get the right people in your world okay like the i think today today someone was telling me there's like four c's to diamonds somebody type in the chat if that's if that's right so i call this my five c's because if you can find like different people to recruit in your world i pro like they will and their diamonds oh my gosh your world will change so the first step to the five c's is you've got to be able to connect with your recruit right or the person that you're hiring second is you have to create the environment for them to feel safe you set the stage right like if you're going to invite them to a training or if you're going to invite them to an event the last thing you want to do is, you know, you bring them inside an event and then everybody's like EXP on them. Right? How many of you guys have ever experienced that? Yeah, I've been to a few and like everybody's like, why not? Why not? Right? Like you want them to feel safe. So if they're going to say yes to an event, yes to going something to going something uh, to, to an event with you, you want them to feel safe. Right? So create the environment where they feel safe, even on a phone call right where they feel safe about asking you questions when it comes to recruit um, to exp and i'll tell you right now is prime time for this opportunity most of the agents are making their decisions right now and december on where they're going to go next i see it every single minute every single day in my world today i've got big agents that are being heavily recruited every single like day it seems like or every week like what do you think about this right so create an environment where you feel safe where they feel safe next is i want you to ask like clarifying questions like this is the clarity piece this is where you ask them about them and their business right what challenge what like what are they most proud of in 2021 right this is where you actually get to know them their business what's going on in their life, right? Because rev share may not be the thing that gets them to the company. It might just be an added bonus, right? It might not be the training. It might be community. Like they've been home alone. They've been in COVID. They've been working. They want culture, 
right? They want to be, they want to feel connected with people that are going to support them, right? Here's where we ask the question. Tell me a little bit about your business, right? Tell me like what you've been up to. Tell me like, what are you most proud of? What are some of your challenges, right? Here's where you start to get really deep on like, all right, what are their challenges in their business? I hate hiring or I hate putting on events. My assistant keeps quitting every three months and then I'm back to square one or I have no time, right? And I'll say that every, like, as you start to study people's patterns in this business, whether you're a $5 million producer, a $10 million, 50, $100 million producer, all of them have challenges. Even the ones that you see on stage, they all have challenges, right? And you, your job is just to listen. It's so interesting because believe it or not, the people in the markets where there's a, like big agents or you think they're like really big agents, I think very few of them get phone calls. And if you actually just listened, you're already 500 steps ahead than anybody else, right? People want to know that there's somebody that can listen and then maybe could offer value, right? And here's where that next step is when it comes to communication. As soon as you figure out whatever their challenge is, who they are, what they are looking for, right? If they do decide to make a move is how are you going to communicate value? The cool thing is if you're with team fast is you've got so much value, right? Behind you, you don't even have to build it. It's already there. You've got an amazing leadership team. You've got an awesome visionary. You've got coaching mentoring, training, we've stacked the deck so high that there's nothing that can't fit for any level of production in Kenny's world. Yeah, and then within that too, like for people who aren't interested just in fast, you know, we're part of the uh, Fast Forward Network, Fast Forward Movement Network, which is uh, ran, operated by Daniel Bear and Kyle Whistle. This year he's doing 525 to 550 million dollars and Kyle Whistle is doing about 400. Speaking of them, it's almost a billion dollar in sales. So we're part of that network where they have weekly Monday calls about 200 people show up. We mastermind, people uh, input their questions uh, ahead of time or, or have it on call and everyone just comes together and have ideas. I pick up a lot of ideas from those events um, to execute right away. And then for the series producers, people doing over $30 million in business. Um, a year or a hundred sides, we have another group that a special group we're in called the fast forward movement generals. And we actually have a chat, uh, a Facebook messenger chat. That thing has, I mean, a crazy amount of messages every day. We're usually talking about high level stuff like hiring and ISAs and conversation structures. And, you know, how do you write agreements and how to build locations like really, really high level stuff. And that, so someone coming in can hop into that uh, Facebook chat. That's pretty lively. And then we actually have bi-weekly meetings at noon on Wednesday where we get together and ask us high level questions. That room is probably like 30 of us, but nowhere else I know that people are masterminding such a high level. And, that, that, and then we, we, you know, last year I went to Mexico for a mastermind for three days and we're all usually bringing in other top agents to, to, to these events. And then within that group, Fast Forward Movement, you know, Dan's sponsor is Curtis Johnson, which is sponsored by Chuck Fazio, which is sponsored by uh, three guys, Al Stayek, Michael Reese, and Jay Kinder. They ran the National Real Estate Associate Experts Advisors uh, designation for many years. Jay Kinder was the number two agent at Global Banker uh, for units. Now they built this thing called Honey Badger Networks. The Honey Badger Network is a big Facebook group with tons of referrals going through it, lots of training, coaching four times a week. I'm actually speaking on my first uh, thing with them tomorrow. So you see like the, the value in communicating the value is you on this call have your own value and then whoever brought you in the company has a, a, a value stack and then if i'm the sponsor then we have all these and these 14 locations and then for a lead agent then we have kyle and dan and for for the masses too then we have them so every level has a different thing that we're able to stack uh to be able to help someone grow the business you know so if i don't have the question i don't know the answer someone in that group of hundreds of people will, will have an answer for that person I think that's what I love about, that yeah, aligning with uh, not only a team like Team Fast, but who's in their upline. And I think that is probably very, very key in, in the EXP world, right? Because different tribes or different like associations offer different things. And like Kenny said, there's nothing that 
he can't get to right. or like somebody doesn't have an answer because his upline is like massively like influential influential people that have massive like businesses um and they are more than happy to give you guys value so i love that so this is where you can communicate depending on what their need is like you don't have to say all the things right sometimes like we want to go above and beyond sometimes it's just like that quick thing that they need that will get them over you know to exp right sometimes it's only a few things it's not the whole menu right so the whole point of like clarifying questions is to really listen to what is it that they need and then communicate the value like kenny had talked about and then the la the next step is like close right and i don't necessarily mean like close for them to sign and like put you as a sponsor it's close for the next step whatever that next step is if they're good then okay perfect we're going to get them you know to the right person so that they could name you as a sponsor but if they're not right it's like the next steps how are you going to follow up with them are you going to invite them to the next event um you stay in touch with them because recruiting is a process especially the higher you go in volume like if you're trying to recruit a big agent it's going to take time because they've got a big business to move over they've got lots of moving pieces right and sometimes you might think that you have the deal done or you might have the partnership done and they go back to their old broker and they offer them the world and you're like what the heck just happened right that's part of the game that is part of the game. And it's no different than when you recruit an assistant and they go back to their employer, like they offer them more money, right? So just know that you're gonna go through that. And if you haven't, you haven't like had enough conversations because it will happen, right? So close for the next step, whatever that step is, even if it's, I'm gonna touch base with you in a couple of months, right? So. The five, like as we like quickly, like anyone have any questions? I know some of you guys are on mute when it comes to connecting and trying and get like recruiting people to your world. Okay, I think we're good. I don't think anybody has questions. Was that simple enough? You can think of like the five C's. I connect, I create to make them feel safe. I ask them questions, right? And then I communicate what I can offer them or what my team can offer them or what my people, my tribe can offer them. And then I close. I close for the next step, right? What's the next step in the process? So it's not about like learning the perfect script. I want you guys to be extremely natural with connecting with humans, connecting with people, because that will get you so much further in life. I always believe that it's never about the strategy, it's about the relationship, right? My relationships have gotten me a lot further in life than any strategy. Those masterminds that you're a part of get you so much further than a simple strategy. It's the relationship. And, and guess what? In real estate, we're in the relationship game. So, Fast action to freedom. How do we all like put it into place, right? How can we take this opportunity now that we kind of know how to invite people or what to say, what our process is, is like, how do we put it all into action? And I get to share what Kenny has designed that has worked. Um, and it's very simple. We talked about it early on is like, Okay, some of you guys have a CRM for your clients when it comes to buying and selling and you know how hot and how cold they are. It's no different than when you're recruiting talent, right? So he uses a Trello board or when he first started, he used a Trello board. And on, to, go ahead. Yeah, okay. um, yeah, can you guys see the, the tabs? Fairly? Oh, They're I see. not yeah, that right, clear. Sorry, sorry. And then so yeah, all... I put them on the side. Can you see him? So his first column is real estate school. And then his second was leads. Then it was nurturing. Then it was interviewed. And then it was number two if they had a second interview. And then they were ready to sign. And then whether it was now or later. Okay. 
So have a board, Trello seems to be the easiest because you can see it visually, you can also see it on your phone. Can we get a recording? Yeah. Kenny, do you want to send a recording to Kat? Or is it going to be in my Yeah, name? for sure. Okay. All right. So uh, uh, we, we can send it. Okay. So whatever the stages are, right, whether it's uh, where you got the lead from or who you connected with is put them down into some type of organized CRM. We happen to use Trello, right? And we had to black out like all the, the names. So, you know, Kenny, he's like at almost every single real estate event, even if it's like he's popping in and popping out. But I bet you he's like, can I get your Instagram or can I get this? And then he's putting them on the board. Um, at the then, moment, I feel like, like back to your last, at the moment, I feel like I have a connection with anyone that even has the slightest interest or I feel like I've been helping them or we connected well, or now our online friends, I put them on the board. That way I don't forget about it. And like, you realize like, you know, you, if you guys want to build a big pipeline, there's people I now are now moving over after I've been talking for two years. Like, and then the thing is about, about recruiting, you're, you're not actually you're trying to recruit them at a point. You're just building connection. The more rapport and value you can bring them, if they're shopping out there, you hope that one day that, you know, they're going to, we're waiting for a, a, a a switch to flip and then something happens with the manager they don't get paid on time they're aggravated they someone uh moved over i think she's on this call where they're they got tired of the manager they were, wasn't loving it and then all of a sudden they had a shredding party waking up their it wasn't the right type of event for their clients and then you're just waiting for people to get upset one day and then you're there when when that time and opportunity comes to have a conversation but it's hard to remember who to keep in touch with unless you had had a board right and this is even harder because there's no you know, no, you know, you're not, you're not showing home the rank offer. You're really just trying to, you know, build, build rapport. So you, you make sure you have on a list. You're, you're DMing people more often. You're liking their posts. You're commenting on stuff on Facebook. This is more strategic on Facebook. You can put up to 40 people on favorites where as soon as they type, uh, do, do a post on Facebook, they're at the top of your feed. And those are people that you're nurturing uh, long term. So, and then I think Instagram is releasing something that's soon, but not yet. So you just realize. The more you interact with people, the more you stay top of mind and the more they stay top of mind for you to move them down this kind of funnel. So good. Yeah. Miguel says, be their plan. And then Christina says, just like a client waiting and they'll come. It's so true, right? Maybe Miguel could speak like shortly. Like I think Miguel's with I me, mean, we've been interacting for six years now until he finally moved over last year. Miguel? Yeah, that's true. I mean, um, so I'm not really, uh, I'm kind of shy. And that's something I told um, Kenny, you know, so Kenny kind of told me the same thing. Like, uh, you know, I just give information out, you know, just keep talking to people, give information out, help people out. And eventually, you know, that, that happened to me. Uh, immediately I'm like, man, I'm not really happy where I'm at. Kenny, let's sit down and, and, and see what's going on. So, you know, it took a while, but uh, it ended up working out. So. Yeah, definitely. That's that's something I, I definitely learned. Like Ryan, Ryan, let me give you an example. Ryan, I, I know I chatted with you for like a good uh, over half year till you finally decided to even consider making a move somewhere, I think. Yeah, uh, it was it was like around three. Uh, yeah, it was like four, four months or so. Um, yeah, and it was just having conversation you know, DMs, um, you know, it really wasn't <laughs> like, honestly, when I was talking to Kenny at first, I wasn't even like, I wasn't happy where I was at, but I wasn't actively looking like I was just going to take time off to be honest with you. And then Kenny, here's the thing. When you provide enough value and they slide in like, Oh, let's, let's sit, let's talk for 10 minutes it's hard for people to say no. And that's kind of where I was. I was like, oh shit. Like I kind of, I kind of, I really don't want to meet with anybody right now. I was like, man, he's like been talking to me for so long. Like, okay, let me at least talk to him. And then that led to a follow-up conversation like a month after that. And then, so yeah, when you, when you come from a place of value, you provide value to people. When you ask them like, yeah, let's just chop it up. I mean, they got to have some real big balls to still say no. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, that's, what's yeah. this? Uh, um, it's the relate. 
relationship bank and the value bank, right? If you keep making small deposits into a bank, and at some point you can cash out. I think the problem with too many agents is you, you meet someone right away and whatever, like, hey, we should chat by ESP. It's good, good that people are bold and doing that, but then you might have, I think agents might have a missed opportunity because they didn't invest any time in that. So they'd be like, oh, you know, what? I'm good. The next couple weeks later, a couple of months later, they, they do meet someone that has provided more value that has been making those positive. And for that chat, a lot of times it could just be, hey, let's grab, let's grab lunch or coffee and, you know, talk about your business. And then going back to the communication connection part, if you're as if you're the first thing you do when you when I mean people like to talk about themselves, that's how you win conversations. You you ask questions and you let people talk about themselves. If you ask someone about their business, at some point they're going to want to ask you about your business. And that's when you can open up at some of the things that you're happy about it, that that you offer. So I think again, like I think people rush to not provide enough value and they want to cash down and try to win employment and close somewhere right away. And that's that's the short game. And it could work sometimes, but I haven't seen many people very successful in that. And that's why the top recruiters at HP are people who has a huge YouTube because um, it's a scale, right? When you have a whole YouTube platform or you're a coach like Ricky Garuth on Instagram or like Google Beth doing a lot of classes too, you're giving, giving, giving at scale. And at some point, you, someone's going to reach out to you and or, or you can answer that conversation. And it's really hard for someone to say no. Because it's like, if I ask you, hey, let's, let's hop on Zoom call. I want to hear more about your business and what tools you're using. This has been working or not. So for me, like, I mastermind with a lot of like KW, Compass, Sotheby people, Sotheby agents all the time to really dive deep, uh, which we're going to go on later in this call too, dive deep in their business. But then I get to kind of share what I'm, I'm, I'm doing too. And then that, that at least now I have open mind or I have learned a little more indirectly through that, through that conversation. Yes. It always come from contribution. Contribution always wins. Value always wins. And like Miguel said, and Ryan said, it's like, eventually it's hard to say no, right? Uh, people had asked like, how do you go into a new market and recruit the top agents? Exactly what you guys all said. It's you give value, you stay in relationship. And eventually when they get mad or there's a situation or, you know, they're finally going, okay, I think I should like look into this. It's hard to actually say no. It was hard to say no to Kenny, right? Like what, what Ryan said. So you come from contribution. And if you have met with them and they still haven't said yes to EXP, you stay in touch, right? You just never know when they're going to say yes. And you want that first phone call, hopefully to be you, right? Hopefully they reach out to you before they make a decision. Yeah. And then for, for all the recruiting stuff, it's like, not, it's not specific to ESP. The rev share is specific to ESP, but the recruiting is not. And another thing I learned recently I, I need to start doing too is, you know, when you're talking to someone, hey, I know you're not ready for a change, you're pretty happy, but when you, you know, you want to let them know, hey, when you do decide to shop and you are considering ESP or Compass or whatever KW your brand is, you know, hey, I always would be, you know, can I be the first call you make if you're considering making a move? And the thing is right now people are shopping overall for different companies you want to, and the ESP is now a strong contender. We're literally the number one unit count for companies in the world. Um, so like you want to be the face of that brand if they decided to shop that brand and people are shopping multiple brands at a time. Not many people are just walking to one office. So how do you, how, you know, you gotta know who you're staying in touch with and ask, ask those questions. You can't even ask, hey, can I be your first call to ESP when you haven't given any value yet? Maybe after you've provided and they've increased their business, they use a new tool you have, you can talk to them, you can have that ask. So your baby steps towards, the, uh, you know, first call, can you have a Zoom call with me? The next time, can you get another Zoom call with me? Will you come out to the event? Then then you can have a, maybe, hey, let's sit down with my, you know, let's sit down with Kenny or Kyle Whistle or Daniel Bear or some other agents here to really talk a little more what it could look like if we work together. Um, Raquel earlier used the word create. That's a really big, big thing too, is like, you wanna create the experience, uh, which were what Raquel said, but you also wanna uh, create the experience of, uh, knowing, showing them ahead of time what it would look like for them to work with you if you decided to work together at some point. And that's why our office, like we've had events here like this Tom Ferry Success Summit. We've had these top producer vendors. We have this. So when people come in, they get to at least see and feel the people and the training and the environment and the vibe and the culture. They're like, hey, this is pretty cool. Now you open up their mind. They're not, maybe they don't sign that day, but maybe people actually have signed on, on the spot after coming to our, our locations. So you just got to bring people onto uh, whatever you're doing, make them feel. So good, so good. Yeah, so when it comes to events, what I will say is those are opportunities for all of you guys. Anytime that there's event training, 
it's like going to a party, never go to a party by yourself, always bring friends along. It's like never go to an event, like especially amazing, incredible events that you guys are throwing by yourself, like invite somebody, make it a point to, even if they said no, at least DM somebody and go, hey, we're having like a, a fantastic social for like Halloween, or we're doing this these event for like, like uh, Kenny said, Tom Ferry's like summit, you guys are more than welcome to pop in our office, right? Never go to an event without inviting somebody else because that's when they get first taste of culture. That's when they get first taste of just meeting other people. And in a hot market, you wanna meet as many agents and build those relationships so you can get your offer accepted, right? Sometimes it takes the relationship of getting your offer accepted versus you know, the highest price, right? It's about relationships. So never go to an event by yourself, always make it a point to invite somebody. So what I know is that the people that have like a big rev share, they track their results. And now they are starting to have a plan for their downline. Because one thing that we know notice is that when people get to EXP, sometimes their sponsor kind of goes away, right? And you want to still keep that relationship, even though they said yes. Like, how can you still provide value now that they are at EXP? They may not be in your same office. They may be across the country, across the world. But how can you, like, intentionally provide value? Because guess what? If you provide value, they recruit somebody, you still get, you know, a bonus of rev share. Right? I think sometimes people forget, and I can tell you, firsthand people have like that have not provided value and got people to exp they want to leave for six months and come back under somebody else because they want to change their sponsor right so keep in touch with the people that you've recruited that said yes to you kenny you want to say something Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Gonna, um pull up another list. Um, yeah, we can pull up and then there's we can we can go over this um, that you're going on. Yeah. So I mean, like you guys so, have so somebody in the back of their pocket. Go, go ahead, Kenny. I said this. This is a. I mean, this is a list of the top recruiters in, in the company based on FLQA, oh, I mean, this is just like, so there's FLA, which is anyone you bring in and FLQA, a FLQA, the Q stands for qualifying. That means you're bringing uh, an agent that has at least sold one home every half year, six months, or has made five grand. Um, so within the company right now, I rank, I think number 10 uh, for bringing on productive agents. So that, that's a huge conversation too. When you're talking to people, you know, like, yeah, you're just recruiters. Yeah, but we, we bring in people who are actually selling a lot of homes. And then there's a list of, we can share with you guys a list of the, uh, the nationwide recruiters um, in this chat. Amazing. Yeah, so you guys have somebody in your back pocket who's one of the best recruiters, right? So they, Kenny has a ton of, if you look at his calendar, he has a lot of recruiting calls every single week, right? So he's learned a few things he can give you and help and support you throughout the process right you've got a leader that wants to give back and help you and support you that's why he wanted to do this training is like how can i help my agents take advantage of this opportunity okay can, can i I'm, just like you go a, yeah i just dropped a link in here uh let me see if i can do a screen share can, can you just pull up that link? It'd be easier if you just uh, do it. You want to talk about it? Yeah, you pull up the link. You can, I can go on the guys see it? Oh, um, let me. Hey, I think it's just a solid. Yeah, can you, you guys, guys see it? Save it. So I just, I just go through a couple of pages. So this is this is literally my, my revenue share. I, I, and the thing is that if you want to be good recruiting, you track your numbers, same with doing sales. So I've tracked my downline every single month since I started the business. And you see, like, I really didn't need to start recruiting until maybe June. I come in the company, but now I need to update this. But now I'm making a little bit 20, my, my check size is averaging about 20 something grand, which is huge. But this is all passive income. Um, if you guys hit the next tab, the FLA names, this is a chart that I, I created to use. Uh, Cause I already, 
got past 40, so people are geeking out in the business territory. So now, now I have so many people in my pipeline that um, they have these just samples, but every time I talk to someone that, and they tell me, like I have three people coming on this month I've been working on for over half a year now because they, they, they're waiting for escrows to close, uh, things get pushed up and such. So every time past that month, if I can't get someone on board and move them to later a month where I feel like they're probably gonna come on that month. So this is, I mean, so with the Trello board, I, I use way back, but now I've, I've hit my goal of having 40 and that's so many people now, the Trello board's kind of overwhelming, but I would recommend that you use that as you're starting off, maybe you have less than 50 contacts. Uh, and then this is what I use now to constantly keep eyes of my, my real one isn't updated in October. I need to go through those lists, look at those names. Have I DM them recently? Have I talked to them? Have I stayed in touch? Have I, I'm pretty bad at follow-up just cause I've, I've been busy. Uh, but if I, I need to talk to all the October people that didn't close and move in November and then check my November people, they don't close and move them to wherever I think they will close at. So it's just a long, long-term grind. This is kind of like as if you were, were working with a seller, sellers, or never sellers are harder to time versus the buyer, right? Buyers they have that action, motivation, showing homes, not showing homes, already pre approved, not sellers could just like call you up tomorrow or in two months from now. Hey, I want to sell this week. So you got to treat these this pipeline like, like a seller list. And if you go to the next tab, the FLA tracker, this, this is officially called the wealth chart. Uh, this is the one that he, he promotes. Um, if you scroll up, look out a little bit. You can see that to activate levels, we're looking at it a little bit, but to activate levels up there, you have to have X amount of people in your front line, second line, third line. So this chart lets you break it down to all those people. And then the column I and J are your generals. Generals is the term or the slang for people in your group that are uh, builders. Builders are generals where they're very influential. You bring them over, you can create, they're, they're gonna be hardcore recruiters for you. So most, you really, every top recruiter should have a couple of top people in, in the revenue group and they have the top people. And that's how you really build up, uh, build that line. It just takes one. Um, give you an example of my, my group here with Fast Real Estate, someone in our group has like 40 people and she brought on a person that's brought on like in her group, 37 people. So the person, the main person that brought that on only literally brought in three more people. And the 37 person bringing on only brought in, the next person she brought on brought 34. Four. So she, she only really built three or four more, but I just stacking these lines, just picking one or two people that are strong under you can, can really change your entire life. Uh, Veronica Figueroa has almost two, 1,600 downline. The person who brought them in um, has like 1,700 downline. Like it's in, in pretty much his entire business is dependent on her. Um, example, Jeremy Larson brought me in. I have 360 something downline. He has like 450. So I'm, I'm, I count for maybe 40, 50% of his downline. Uh, actually, maybe more. I think 60% of the downline. I know Big Sun is called, so Big accounts for 10% of them. So, like, constantly, you just need one or good solid people, and they can build your entire thing. So, that one call you make next week to that one broker owner or that one top agent can really change your whole life. And then you fill in the gap with the front line. It could be random agents, new lights to see what or whatnot. Um, and then the middle column is in progress. You know, process is exactly as how it sounds. People you're talking to, working with, and working how the people you think are likely more to move over. Um, and then the pipeline is the pipeline so and then i used to track my numbers on here um but i don't right now and then on the left side number row 16 you see unqualified you might have a bunch of people you recruited but they're not selling any homes so you need you if you're doing this at a high level you need to pay attention to those people and, and I, I look at that thing every two weeks like who on this thing is unqualified why are they not qualified yet i'm looking at usually there's a new agent that signed on but that you want to now focus your time checking out them making sure they don't leave the company how can you help them in the business so they can become a qualifier because if you don't have the right qualifiers, you have hundreds and thousands of people in, in your group, you're not getting paid a full amount. You're getting paid a very, very small share of what you could potentially earn. The national payout um, of an agent, if you're, if you're all seven levels steep, it's about 800 bucks. If you're not, it's probably around 600 to something. So realize that like, I'll give you an example. Someone has a group of, um, my friend in SoCal has a group of 260 right now. His checks should be 20 grand. But it's not. He has some frontline qualifiers. His checks are like fifteen hundred dollars. So if you're not also paying attention and recruiting those one into your frontline, you even you grow a big group, you're not gonna get paid. Okay. Um, that's all I have to share for about about this slide, Raquel. Awesome. They asked if uh, can they save this? Should yeah, they just take a copy and then good. save it? It says please copy. Okay, yeah. so you guys can definitely save it for sure. Anyone have any questions?
And this, um, you gotta look up wealth chart. You can look up EXP wealth. Chart. Hey, Kenny, I have a question. I hope you can hear me because I'm in a bad reception area. Yeah. Um, whenever you're, because are you, the agent attraction program we're trying to do and push out is not to our team. Like we don't want to bring any more individual team members on. Uh, what we want to do is kind of uh, bring, we're creating something that's going to bring value to them, but have everyone be able to join as an individual agent. But we are trying to figure out what are some things, some solid things that we can provide um, that is going to, uh, but besides the thing that we're already creating, we're creating this huge course for brand new spanking agents that don't know their head from their ass when you come out of school and you don't even know what questions to ask brokerages and what's a super and all that stuff. We're creating something for those brand new agents because we attract a lot of brand new agents, but what are some other things besides our, the resources our upline has and resources and we've created what are some things that you're doing uh, or providing to your downline um, or the or the uh, agent attraction of your of your downline? Is there something that you're providing that's accessible to everyone? Because we're trying to figure out that piece. Like, this is what I mean, EXP provides. This is what we can provide. Yeah. This is what our uplines provide. But what can we do to kind of differentiate um, ourselves? I mean, for for me, and then some things you can kind of leverage off what we're doing. Like locally, I have these seven, seven office spaces that are available for my downline to use. So that's not probably feasible for everyone. Sometimes it's maybe uh, getting tech, different tech tools I'm using and constantly sharing with, the, with them or getting them, like we use high note on high level, getting them past the line, waiting line to get that tool fast or giving them all my templates, like our Asana templates, our onboarding templates, stuff like that to help build their business. Because one, one of the tricks things we didn't even say today is like, you want to be like their sales manager before they even join. That's why I share all the secrets and everything I do on Instagram. Because when, so again, when someone's unhappy or looking for a new sales manager, I've been that person that's already being filling that role that they're not getting. So you guys, it, it takes a lot of proactiveness to kind of fill in. For you guys, like I know you guys do a lot of investments. Um, you know, I mean, YouTube is the easiest way to scale. So whatever you film on YouTube, whatever content you create on YouTube, you're going to attract the people who's looking for that. So I can tell you what people are looking for that you're going to be able to attract. With. Whatever you make is who you, whoever, whoever watches that content, it's going to be that. That's why guys like Mike Sherrard, it's on the list, 90 FLQ, he's the number one recruiter in the world because he has YouTube pages teaching people social media and lead gen every single day. For you guys, maybe it's like teaching people how to do it. Uh, I know you work with a lot of investors. Maybe it's focusing and creating a video library series on how to work with investors. Oh, in fact, the guy right. who recruited Mike Sherrard, which is a top recruiter, is named Con Connor Steinbeck, and he has his YouTube channel called Investor Army. And Mike Sherrard spoke on Wednesday call last week. I just learned this, like, you know, tons of people have been trying to recruit Mike over the years, but no one's ever listened to him. And then Connor, uh, the approach he went was like, hey, hey, you know what? I have a larger uh, YouTube audience than you. So using cloud is really important. I have a larger YouTube. Why don't you come speak on my channel so you can leverage and build and, and build your audience? Like, well, you can't say no to that, right? You really can't. So is this finding what your unique value proposition is? And I, I don't know what it is because it, 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 you might have something that's unique, but it not, might be very appealing to a lot of people. So you kind of have to think of, you know, how do you reach the masses? For you, like, I don't know how many top team leaders are actually on YouTube looking for videos on investments, but, you know, you, you're not here to, right off the bat to recruit 50 people, you're recruiting one or two or three at a time, and then it keeps building up. You're, if you imagine you just recruited one, two people every single month, you'd be, Frank Gold literally just does two a month, and he has 17,000 17, people in his downline. Okay, got it. So I think the key is, right, um, as we like wrap up today is one, have a process uh, for when you connect, right? Like you're not necessarily recruiting them, you're connecting with people to bring into your world, uh, whether it's EXP on your team or in a network, right? Because even if they live across the world or in another state, you still can recruit them to EXP under your network. And you know, I mean, the common one that you see all the time that it takes a little more work is, you know, you're holding, you're putting together these big masterminds, right? Like Raquel, you came down to Santa Cruz to speak. 
at a mastermind that Ben Strzok, which was recruited by Jeremy, held. And, and then Jeremy brought me in and some KW agent and some Compass agent. And we all just spoke about what, what we're doing. So you, you by yourself might not be able to bring that value at, but if you're putting a room together, a mastermind, that's your value. You, you set that up and you start bringing other people. And you, if you're bringing, you, sh you should be bringing people that you want to attract to the company. Cause then now you're, you're leveraging, you putting the event on them, them gain more of an audience, more recognition, more clout. And now once you, you're building rapport and you just help them get, get, get more famous and then maybe they have a conversation with you, right? So all those events, like a hundred percent of the time, at least a couple people will move over. That's what Dan Bear and Kai Whistle used to do. The fast forward movement used to be like a monthly, a quarterly event. It was the fast forward mastermind. And they brought people together and then uh, Mary Maloney, Daniel Bear, Kai Whistle did that and they started bringing other speakers. So we're, we're working on something like that right now um, where, and it, I mean, that, that's if you want to get, like you, you're very specific on the agent that you would like to one day bring over. You have them speak, but the, the, we're working on something right now. We don't even have a date yet. I know that I want Raquel to come speak at this office. My downline, Bill Pipes, coaches with, no, my downline, uh, Bill Davis, coaches with Bill Pipes, which is one of the, like, the number one uh, Tom Ferry coach, coaches with them. Okay, how, I'm thinking, how about I get Raquel, he gets Bill, and then we bring in two more speakers, maybe one from KW or Southeast or Compass, whatever, and bring them to speak here. We'll fill, fill this room up that we're in, you know, for, like, with 100-something people deep, and then now, you know, that they come in, they like what they see. Like, hey, this, this is pretty cool what you guys are doing here. What are you guys doing? See, it's, it's that first step. So I'll say, like, recruiting team members has been easy for us. Top producer dinner, office, whatever. But if you want to recruit bigger people, you have to put them bigger events. Um, or inviting people to, yeah, but it's still depends on the upline. So you, if your upline is doing something, you should leverage that. If you, if you don't have it and they're not doing something in your market, you, you create it. You be your own upline. Awesome, Kenny. I know that we had an hour. If there's anybody that wants to stick around for questions today, we got a process. We learned how to put it in action, like through Trello when it comes to nurturing, because some people may not say yes. And it's all about giving value, uh, listening, coming from contribution. And I know that with the program that you guys have, the opportunity that you guys have, you've seen it all over, right? It's endless, right? It keeps growing and growing and growing if you focus a little bit of your time into it. And then, you know, if you guys need more advice, you don't have to have these meetings. I mean, this event, which we'll have once a month um, to speak, you know, you can always like ping me at callcommunityfast.com or you're my downline, but even if you're not your own call, you, someone brought you in or I did, just go, you can always grab our time to kind of dive a little deeper on what it is that you're doing. Is, is, is a group sport, is a contact sport. Yeah, we're happy to share and go more deeper into like strategies and like what other people are doing, what Kenny's doing, what we're seeing out there. If you guys want to get more into what's working and what's not working. The, the step that you could take away from today is connect with people, get them into a process. And there's lots of events that you guys can invite them to. And I think uh, EXP, it sells it for itself based on the community that you've curated or connected with. Cool. cool. All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Again, if you need me, just uh, F fast, AF zoom.com. You can book 15 minutes with me and uh, call to me fast. You can get 30 minutes, just any time is available. Cool. And thank you, Carl. Bye everyone. Thank you.